If you're like me, when I started in 3D, you are struggling to make game characters. The workflow is unclear, the steps you need to take are very confusing. Well, no more. By the end of this video, my goal is that you'll have all the resources, the tools, and the knowledge you need to start working. So yeah, let's hop in with number one, concept or reference images. Basically, if you're making a character, you need to know what you're making. So what I usually like to do is either, if I'm kind of like making a character for myself, I'll have a concept to so just come up with a simple brief, like I'm gonna make a character, the personality is like blah, 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 that's this, this, whatever. So I go to Pinterest and I'll just go start searching for images. And then whatever images I find, I'll start adding them to PureF. So PureF is basically just where you can put in a bunch of images all in one piece and move the images around and stuff like that. Really good program, I recommend you download it. Uh, link in the description. I'll be adding a lot of links throughout this video. So check the description and there'll be a playlist of all the different like tutorials you have. So you can see here, this is an example of one of my reference boards. It's just here to kind of give you a clear idea of what you're going to be doing. And then I'll go on to just doing a simple sketch. This is not really that necessary. I like to sketch stuff out to like really solidify my mind. I do that with everything. Right, number two, the base mesh. So basically all the base mesh is just a character, no clothing, no nothing, it's just a base thing, and then we'll start building all of the other clothing, details, hair, all of that stuff later on top of this. So it's actually important because we need to get all the proportions, all the like the different topology of it, and all of that working so that it works well later on. So basically the first thing you want to have is good proportions. So there's something called shape language in your character designs. Um, you can push this, especially if you're making like more of a stylized character. So you can make it, if it's a masculine character, make it have like big shoulders and big arms and make them like all muscly. And maybe if you need like a sneaky character, make them like skinny and like long and so they can like sneak around and stuff like that. So you can really like start pushing your characters to make them convey that idea you have across to your viewer. So just start messing around with proportions and all of that. And the second thing you need to worry about is topology. So topology is basically how the faces move around your character. So like how the flow of them. And this is basically, you want to get it like designed so that you can actually deform all the meshes. General rule of thumb is you just want to have any like limb, you want to have a loop going around it and that's it. You would just think if the arm is moving like this, where would you need more like edges and how would it like move around for that to get it to like deform properly. I'll be making some videos on the future on how to actually get good topology and some examples and stuff like that. But yeah, just general thumb, kind of what makes sense. If you have a, something that's gonna move, you wanna make a loop around it. And you can also just look up some references of like characters for animation, or even like go download some free models and like Sketchfab or something like that, and study how their topology works. All right, clothing. I have a very simple method for making clothing. It, all it is, is you take the base mesh that you just made, and then you duplicate it, and then you delete all the parts that you wouldn't need for that piece of clothing. So say if you have a t-shirt, you delete the part of the head, the hands, and the legs and then there you, go, you have a t-shirt piece and then you can like change the proportions and stuff like this uh, if you want to make it like skin tight or baggy or so on and once you have that then you go add a solidify modifier that just adds some thickness so it doesn't it's not on top of the skin but like the same like thing because then you can have all sorts of problems with game engines yeah and then your clothing is looking good all right then step four details so details can be really nice and can really like bring like extra little bit of stuff to your character so basically you want to add the detail in the places you want to actually get your viewer to look so stuff like the hair the face around the neck like that or by the hands or something so basically think about where you want your viewer to look when they look at your character and start adding a little bit more detail there than the rest of the body so for example you might not want to add like a ton of detail to the feet if that's not a, like a big selling point to your character Maybe they have rocket boots and then you add a bunch of detail there. But maybe they, you just want to have not that much detail and you just make them like dark and stuff so it doesn't like when you look at the character, that isn't the first thing that comes to your eyes. Maybe the hair, that's the first thing that pops into your mind or something. You can just, whatever deep like extra things or things you want to make, kind of just start breaking down the shapes. Because since I'm working with low poly, you can just break down the shapes into the most simplest forms and then you can usually get away with modeling them very simply. So like everything can really be like broken down into cubes, planes, circles, stuff like that. Um, yeah, textures. All right, this is something that a lot of people get wrong. When they're making textures for games, they'll just use blended materials, which basically, if you just create a material for each different color, that is very unoptimized for game engine. Basically how it works is in the unit, in the game engine, each like new material, they have to render that and blah, blah, blah. 
technical stuff, but yeah, just saying, probably bad to have a lot of materials, like hundreds upon hundreds of materials, and it's just part for customization and all of that. So a better way is something called a UV Atlas. Now, all it is is basically a very low res image, so it can be like 10 by 10 pixels, but each pixel is a different color. So say we have 10 by 10, there we go, we have 100 colors. And then you just shrink your thing, like your parts of your mesh, onto those specific things. I'll put some more tutorials on that in the description. This basically just improves it because you just have a single image texture that you can apply to a character or even a whole environment. Old games used to do this as well, like even games like Minecraft, because they have such low resolution on their textures. It's just a big image with just like quick, like small little like nine by nine textures. That's just a huge like image like that. That's like all the textures. All right, then rigging. Rigging is like also very important if you want to start bringing a new character to life. Rigging is basically required if you're going to start animating your characters. So rigging is basically like a bone structure that you can start moving around to like start puppets in your character. So you just start adding like bones for the arm and then you can like start lifting the arm and stuff like that. So there's three different things. First, you need to create a rig. I have more videos on rigging in the description, um, but basically all it is, is as I said before, it's a, just a structure of bones. Second thing you have is weight paints or skinning, depending on what you're doing. They kind of just call it different things. Basically all it is, is when you have a, like a specific bone, you have like a heat map saying, this specific vertice in your model is affected this much by this bone. So in Blender, it's displayed as a heat map of like blue zero, so it says like zero influence, and red, which is one, which is 100% influence. If you're rigging for Unity, the simplest way to do this is by using an add-on called Rigify, which just creates a, like a default like rig for you to use. It's basically like a template. There's a couple bones that you need to delete, then you may have to add extra bones for the hands. This is just helpful because it has like kind of just the normal proportions and you can like fit this to your character obviously. And then it also has all the bones named, which is very time consuming if you're making your own rig. Because you have to go through and type out every name, every bone, make it like, make sense, have like the left and the right. And if you're rigging for Unreal, I found this very useful add-on called Game Rig Tools. I also have this link down below. Basically all it is is it generates a default like rig and you can like change the proportions of all it. A video on that link down below. It's a really good add-on and really useful and I use it a lot when I'm working with the Unreal Engine, like the mannequin. Then we can export everything in and see it in the game. Exporting is usually just go file, export, and then FBX. So FBX is kind of the, the usual file format for like something in Unreal or Unity. I'll have the settings on the screen right now if you want to check those out and copy them when you're exporting. Right, I also have a free PDF for you to download. We'll basically be going through all the different steps that I've gone through over this video, and it's going to be doing like more in depth for you to refer back to instead of having to like come back to the video. Okay, so if any of this has been confusing or haven't explained all of it, I'll have a full playlist that I'm going to be updating in the future. I'm going to be adding more videos on topology and some like clothing and stuff like that. Click over here if you want to watch that playlist right now. Cheers.